Uh, hello everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, and it's, uh, I'm very happy and excited to present uh, to the students from uh, Kumaraguru. <laughs> um, so let me share my screen and uh, I'll start. Um, if you have any questions, uh, you can um, type it in the chat and I will answer them at the end. Uh, because uh, I'm not a professional presenter, so I, I need to uh, take time to answer those. So I will answer them at the end uh, so that we can finish the presentation on time. Okay. Uh, so as ma'am mentioned, yeah, I am running my own company, mm, uh, mostly consulting, uh, not really full development, consulting on emerging technologies like cloud computing, AI, uh, big data, and now blockchain. Uh, I'm also uh, pursuing masters in blockchain online uh, from University of Barcelona. And the course is starting next month. So that, um, so with that, yeah, I will start with artificial intelligence, okay, and how it's going to shape the economy of the future. Okay? So that's the main goal of this presentation. Okay. Um, so the caption is uh, less intuition and more analytical. Okay? Um, so this is with respect to the decisions that we make today. Okay. Uh, most of the times we make it um, um, based on our gut feeling. Okay. Mm, not really based on data. Okay. But in business world, that's not how things are supposed to work. Okay? Uh, you have to use more data and be more analytical when you make a decision. Okay? Uh, so that the reason, the reasonings are strong. Okay? So that's where, you know, uh, that's why companies wanted to go into the AI field so that every decision that they make okay, uh, is powered by analysis, okay? not by some instinct. Okay? Um, with that, okay, I'll, I'll show the agenda. But before the agenda, okay, I wanted to tell a joke, okay, because this presentation is really a dry presentation. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so um, there was a guy, young guy, okay, and he had to attend a very important event uh, a month later, okay, and then uh, uh, he wanted to dress up for the event. So what he did was he wanted a custom-made suit, okay, a pant uh, and a coat. Uh, so he bought the clothes uh, and then went to the tailor uh, and the tailor took the measurements and uh, uh, the tailor said, you come back after two weeks, I will have the suit ready for you. Okay. And after two weeks, um, the guy went and gave the receipt and the tailor gave him the suit and the tailor asked him to try it out in his shop. So he went to a trial room, changed his clothes, put on the suit. When he came out, one hand was shorter than the other hand in the coat. Okay, and one leg was shorter than the other leg in the pant. Okay, and he did not have time. Okay, so he was in a hurry. So he was asking the tailor, you know, uh, how come you can stitch like this? The tailor said, I can fix it. Uh, but this guy says, no, I'm in urgent, uh, I have an urgent work, so I cannot do that. So how do you think I can even get out of the shop with this dress? So the tailor said, tuck your hand inside, okay? Uh, the coat, okay, so that it looks both are of same size, and then uh, bend your knee so that both the pants look the same size, the legs look the same size in the pants. And he said, uh, okay, and then he did that, and when he walked out, okay, uh, he he looked like he had some um, challenges, physical challenges in his body, and that's why he is working like that. And when when the ladies asked, there were a few ladies who were looking at him and they said, um, you know, we should really appreciate the tailor for stitching such a beautiful suit for a physically challenged person. Okay. The moral of the story was so far we have developed software, okay, in a way that the user has to change themselves to use the software. Okay. Whereas in AI world, you should be thinking the other way around. Okay? Where the software should change itself to understand the user and work in his mode. Okay? So that was the moral of the story okay? when you come to AI world. Okay? Uh, so you have to think totally from a user perspective. Okay? Um, thinking that your, your software will actually conform to the 
uh, users uh, requirements and learn from users and help them okay not the other way around where you the users sit for like 20 hours and learn your software and then start using it okay okay with that yeah i will start with the agenda the first agenda is data driven culture okay before any company wants to even use ai okay they have to have a data driven culture otherwise using ai is use, not useful to them uh, the second is about artificial intelligence itself okay a primer from a market perspective what is going on and how artificial intelligence is helping companies uh, with few small case studies uh, and then economies of scale which is uh, the principle applicable to most of the businesses running today okay and then the new economy that will spawn out of ai okay now how it is going to be okay what are the key trades of that and then what are the disruptions that it is going to cause okay uh, in the new economy in combination with ai and new technologies okay and finally ai also has drawbacks in the current scenario okay? so i will go through that okay uh, so this is the agenda uh, so data driven culture okay? uh, so i cannot you know, uh, emphasize how important it is to for a company to have a data driven culture okay? in the sense every decision you make okay um, you should base it on the data okay you should have the data and say hey, i made this decision because of this data okay it includes hiring or firing or any operation decision you make okay? uh, so the major mission undertaken by most of the companies around the world which are very big companies is to transform themselves to be a data driven company Okay, in day-to-day -day basis, they want to use data. Data, okay. And here is a quote from Satya Nadella, Microsoft. Okay, from Microsoft. So every aspect of Microsoft business is being fundamentally transformed because of data. Okay, you have to build deeply into the fabric of a company, a culture that thrives on data. Okay, so data. I cannot tell how how important it is. For, for any company to be data driven, no matter what size you are, even if you're a startup, you, you have to be data driven. Uh, so, how to really become a data driven company? Okay, you cannot really become uh, overnight. Okay, you have to start small and then go big. Okay, so the first step is you should start collecting data. Okay, okay, if you are a company, okay, where you have people, 100 people working, you should start collecting data about what they are working on, okay, how long they are working on, all those things. Okay, and then step two is okay. You use the data to understand the past. Okay, when something goes wrong, okay, you go to the data and find out what went wrong. Okay, and how it went wrong. Okay, that is what you in industry. After we deliver any project or any sprint, okay, uh, if there were any defects or anything, okay, we go and do some causal analysis to find out the root causes. Okay, and the truth. Okay. So you have to use data to understand the past, okay, in the second step. In the third step, once you have um, data, democratize it in the sense give access to as many users as possible in the company, okay. And in addition, treat everything as data. Don't just think of the data receiving your know, database as data. Treat images as data, okay, treat the news article as a data, okay, treat everything as a data. Maybe your company... Um, company social media post is also a data. Okay? So you have to get into the mindset where you treat everything as data in the step stage four, stage three. Okay? In stage four, you build a large scale data. Okay, uh, your data will grow exponentially as the number of people uh, increase in your organization. Okay, and uh, once you have a large scale data, okay, you may not be able to do the causal analysis because it is very very big data. Okay, you cannot write a simple query to find out what went wrong or something. Okay, instead you should start switching to correlation analysis instead of causal analysis. Okay, I will explain what it is at the end of the slide, and then use the data for innovation. Okay, once you know the data, okay, you can understand. Okay, what innovative service you can use. Okay, uh, what innovation for innovative products or new products you can build for your business. Okay, a lot of companies are really making. Um, their data uh, used to build new products okay? uh, and then step six is you use in step two you use the data to understand the past whereas in step six you use the data to predict the future using predictive analytics analytics okay uh, so i will come to step four correlation analysis okay correlation analysis is uh, 
you know it's it's to find out uh, the strength of relationship between two variables yeah. for example the best example from nature is thunder and lightning okay okay when when lightning occurs and let's say after few seconds thunder storm thunder comes okay uh, we know okay there is a correlation between them okay and most of the times if you take a sample okay huge sample you may be even able to find out that hey at this location uh, there is a 60% chance of a thunder when there is a lightning occurring 100 times okay so if lightning occurs 100 times you you can very well predict that there will be a thunder at least 60 times okay the same is also applied on all the retail stores online stores like amazon for product recommendation okay if product a is selling okay and people are after they add the product a to cart and they go to product b okay then when you show product a show them product b itself okay so that way you know you can understand if a sells 100 pieces b will sell at least 50 pieces okay so correlation analysis once you move to big data okay large scale data you cannot conduct causal analysis you have to switch to correlation analysis okay so that's how uh, you you really start to become a data driven company okay and you you can call yourself a data driven company only when you use data to predict the future as accurately as possible okay for example if you are running an e-commerce site okay if you have the data for the last 10 years okay uh, let's say even 12 years okay and now we have a we are in a recession you can look back when was the last recession that was in 2009 almost 11 years ago so what was the trend i'm going to use that and predict the future for 2020 because we are again in recession right now okay so you have to really have the ability to predict the future using your data okay so that's the most important thing with respect to data driven culture um, to to enable your company to become a data driven company okay you also need to focus on analytics okay a gold mine is not worth anything if you can't extract the gold okay the same thing goes for even oil okay countries in the middle east they were sitting on huge reserves of oil but they never knew how to get them out and what to use it for okay until america came in okay and then they uh, american companies came and they extracted the oil they refined it okay they separated it to uh, gas fuel pure one for planes and then less quality ones for developed nation cars and then uh, petrols and then diesel and then kerosene okay uh, so so you have to extract okay information okay and value from the data and you can do it only when you have a thriving analytics practice and tools in your company okay so the way you start analytics is you start with a set of tools to build pre-planned reports okay let's say you wanted to look at uh, your sales of your e-commerce website every week okay so you have a weekly sales report okay uh, you have you want to take a look at the, um, the inventory every day so you have a daily inventory report Okay. So you start with the small ones. These are pre planned reports. Okay. So you can definitely uh, uh, develop them in a primitive form at least. Okay. Mm. Once you have the report, it means you have the data to see in a formatted, in a structured way. Okay. And then you are doing the analysis by yourself. Okay. You, when you see the data in a chart or anything, if the bar chart goes down for this week, you know the sales is down. Okay. And eventually, what you can do is you can automate that as an analysis okay so you set up an alert so you don't even need to look at the report so if sales go down 10 percent week over week or year over year okay you automatically get an alert so that you don't need to look at the report at all so if you start looking at reports for everything okay you will spend whole day looking for reports looking at the reports okay so you have to automate them into an analysis okay and there are a lot of programs okay a simple SQL query would also do the same thing. Okay, you don't even need to be a data science expert to do that. But whatever information you're looking for or alerts you need from the data, okay, uh, you have to automate them. Okay, and then uh, once you are heavily using reports and automated analysis, then make analytics as a strategic priority for business users in the organization. Okay, uh, so that give them the tools that that they can run sophisticated analysis. Okay. In, in some cases, okay, the analysis is not very straightforward, okay? Uh, so we need to compare uh, vendor uh, supply report as well as sales report and find out why 
uh, and also delivery partner report all these things okay so definitely uh, you have to build sophisticated analytics tools when when business you just start to use them in a day to day basis okay and then finally if you want to become a very mature company make analytics central to all activities in the business okay whatever is going on in your business there should be a company dashboard through which people can see it okay and whatever red flag that you want to raise to all people at any time you don't need to email them the system itself should raise it to the concerned users okay so that's how so you have to have a thriving analytics practice in your company okay that's when you you can definitely make the data best out of your data okay so without analysis you know data is worth nothing okay? only when you analyze you get information okay you can make decisions all those things okay? um before i step into artificial intelligence okay uh, it has really created a lot of fear in the skill uh, in the society about what skills will be uh, displaced okay what kind of workers will be displaced all those things okay so there is always this man versus machine debate that goes on in developed countries um, during the elections okay but i wanted to explain okay where we are with respect to that now okay and also i wanted to tell at the end i will tell how we can compete with machines okay um so the first industrial revolution okay before the first industrial revolution that happened in great britain okay mm. uh, it was mostly for uh, the, there were small tailor shops okay around the neighborhood where people would uh, spun the cloth in their home but give that clothes to the tailor and they would stitch the cloth for them and that's how things were okay when first industrial revolution came in okay okay these textile mills uh, were started and all these tailors and other and the people who weave the clothes they all became workers for the textile mills rather than a small business owners okay in the sense it really displaced that industry the small scale companies or individual businesses and made it the big textile mills okay and eventually what happened is they built machines that can spin woven okay do all those things okay and they got displaced okay so the first example the first industrial revolution itself gave a clue okay where when man was trying to compete with machines with the muscle power they actually lost it in the first industrial revolution itself okay people who used just their muscle power okay to compete against machines they lost in the first industrial revolution itself okay so if your business is heavily reliant on muscle power okay then even in today's world okay you can expect that to be displaced anytime soon okay. the second industrial revolution came uh, with the advent of uh, electricity okay uh, before uh, second industrial revolution okay uh, most of the uh, companies okay used coal okay uh, wood and others as steam as other, and others as uh, energy source For, to run their company okay it's unthinkable but in second industrial revolution electricity came in okay when electricity came in okay uh, it was not available to all the people it was only available to industries at the beginning okay and these electricities were actually produced by the companies there was a textile company who would actually have their mill close to the river and they generate electricity from the river water okay and then they use it that's how it was and then power companies came in and they said hey uh, you don't need to be always on the river side you can keep your mill anywhere we will produce the electricity and store it transmitted to your company no matter where you are okay and then with that advent okay as the mills and other things started to move away into the cities and other places and that's when okay a uh, lot of uh, big businesses started to come in and mass production came in okay so every, everything that you see most of the things that is manufactured in india is today uh, still manufactured almost in the second industrial revolution style okay uh, so the mass production displaced a lot of skilled laborers also like tailors okay because uh, they now have electric powered machines okay um, and then cartwheel workers okay people did not even need uh, bullock carts or horse carts anymore okay lift operators also the earlier lift was uh, rope based and motor based okay and with the advent of washing machine and uh, other household devices even household servants were displaced okay uh, they lost their job uh, in developed countries and started to move on to work in other fields okay. 
the third industrial revolution okay uh, we are actually in fourth the third as well as the fourth i would say okay uh, third industrial revolution the inform information technology came in okay and we built lot of systems okay uh, that actually helped uh, 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 us in lot of ways okay but it also displaced some more skilled labors okay so typically is receptionist it's very hard to see uh, a receptionist in a company these days okay if they are there their role is slightly different uh, personal assistants we would be having okay as so of before the boss arrives these personal assistants will go through their mails uh, postal mails all those things and keep it and bookkeeping okay for tax and other things mm. that is also now those workers are also now displaced because of this the fourth one is the machine learning okay uh, here okay, uh, we replace both uh, intellectual and unskilled jobs okay uh, so for example uh, there is a field called natural language generation okay using ai that is now intelligent enough to write stories poems all those things by itself uh so because of which uh, okay uh, people who are highly skilled in writing these articles feel threatened and there comes self driving cars okay which is going to replace taxi drivers and others okay when self driving cars come in okay do you really need a license to drive that no because the car is driving by itself okay so the very concept of license will just be used for identity okay so these are the uh, changes coming in okay so you need to keep in mind between man machine Uh, i will explain how you have to get ready to compete against machines for the future at the end of this presentation uh evolution of machines okay so since we use machines every day okay how have the machines evolved they all started with assistive okay one minute i will mute the others sorry okay got it. yeah um so assistive okay um, it was just used to help somebody okay by mechanical okay like for example cutting the wood okay uh, or filing the iron all those things okay um, and then they moved on to the administrative tasks okay and where humans used uh, computers okay to perform some some administrative tasks like appointments okay mails all those things and then automation okay so they did sophisticated automations also using information technology okay uh, and then augment okay so this is where okay um, people started to realize hey actually ai yeah, can make me better okay? and most of the people who play chess and go in developed countries they now play with uh, with the computer first because that trains them very very well okay uh, it can think of lot of scenarios games patterns and all these things and its challenges okay a very well known example is uh, ibm's uh, um, computer okay deep blue Uh, defeating Gary Kasparov, okay, in a five games match, five five games uh, series, it won again uh, three times, and that's how uh, it became. And even now, Gary Kasparov uses AI to train himself in chess. Okay, similarly, the Korean or the Chinese game called Go, okay, people are using that. Okay. And the next is autonomy. Okay, so autonomy is the stage where the machines uh, act almost like humans. Uh, they can do most of the things that the humans can do. Okay, uh, that can start with even self-driving cars with the robots. Okay, so you have a robot as a household worker. Okay, which is happening in Japan and other countries. Uh, you know, you come and park your car. The robot will actually put it, put that electric car into the charger. Okay, and it can take a lot of things. Okay, and uh, so the lines between AI and humans get blurred when we reach this stage. Uh, we are at the beginning, I would say, but still we have a long way to go. Okay. Uh, artificial intelligence okay so before we explain artificial intelligence i want to explain three concepts so artificial intelligence broadly refers to creating of intelligent machines okay which can learn by themselves okay under that specifically for people in it industry okay we use two things right one is machine learning and the other is a subset of machine learning called deep learning okay so machine learning okay uh, the definition is uh, a computer program is said to learn from experience e with respect to some task t and some performance measure p and if its performance on the task as measured by p improves with experience okay so this is a very apt definition but i will give it give an example to to tell that okay uh, for example we use computers okay 
to filter spam emails okay uh, so okay so um, the task t in this case is filtering spam email okay and the experience is we are giving it spam emails as well as good emails okay and the performance measure p okay that we are measuring is how accurate it can uh, filter out the spam mails okay so you keep giving more data more spams okay uh, more data saying hey if, if you see these keywords um, and all these things then this is how it is a spam okay uh, these are good emails so the computer keeps on learning okay when the pattern changes okay uh, then people will give some more emails and then make it learn okay so that's how they improve the machine learning you don't need to explicitly program it rather you give more data or new data to train it okay so the ai actually hit a stall the development in artificial intelligence world actually hit a stall okay it was completely under grinding halt i would say when after ibm defeated gary kasparov okay the challenge faced by companies who were working in ai was they developed specialized ai machines which can play chess or do this task okay that's how it was developed or recognize uh, letters optical character recognition all those things but there was no framework that was available to build a general purpose ai system okay that can do anything and everything okay there was no framework for that okay and they tried very hard okay and there was no breakthrough and in 2006 okay uh, in canada okay uh, one of the um, scientists okay he studied brain and he said why don't we use the similar pattern okay uh, the neurons based network uh, to train the systems and that's when they came up with the neural network that at that time it was called as deep nets in 2006 and they started to train okay uh, those systems and see whether it can learn anything general and that actually worked okay so that's when the breakthrough came again and people started to see a lot of companies uh, trying to use ai in the form of machine learning and deep learning okay so and deep learning is heavily reliant on the neural network okay? and if you are familiar with the deep learning course of okay, uh, andrew ing from uh, boido okay uh, and google he is very very famous for deep learning lectures okay so you can watch him um with respect to ai okay when when i wanted to introduce ai to my company okay or if i want to buy a service that that the vendor says it's ai based okay so these are the six criteria that you need to evaluate the systems okay i'm not talking about building a ai system okay because um, a lot of companies don't have the capacity to build it it requires huge money huge effort instead there are a lot of good ai providers for most of the specialized services okay so go with them but when you want to evaluate them okay this is how you have to evaluate the ai system the first thing is called problem representation which means how can you tell the machine what your problem is what problem you are trying to solve okay how easily can you do it can you do it via natural language saying hey is this number a fibonacci number that's what i'm trying to figure out okay so you just tell the computer is this a fibonacci number and give a number that's how you know, how easily can you enter if not okay you give an array and then you tell them hey if you see these numbers okay or pick the fibonacci numbers you give the algorithm from your side Okay, so you have to find out how easily you can tell the problem that you are trying to solve to the AI component. That that really is the biggest barrier for companies to adopt AI because they cannot really tell it in an easy way. That requires that itself requires a lot of coding. Okay, and the second one is knowledge representation. What you tell the computer, okay, uh, what your problem is, okay, um, and how to solve it, okay, that is stored as a knowledge in the AI system. Okay, and you want to know how it is stored so that you know your 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 output. It it knows how to filter bad input and other exceptional cases. Okay, so you also want to understand how the computer is storing the knowledge that you are giving it to it. Okay, can it explicitly be upgraded? Okay, uh, can it be downgraded? Okay, uh, can it be? Uh, Uh, change it to an another direction okay, so how knowledge is stored within the ai system is also very important and the second one is solution search okay you you to solve a problem you don't give just one algorithm okay you give four or five algorithms to the system and it learns from it okay and 
it, it documents how it's going to search for solution for your problem. Okay. So when you give the actual problem, okay, you also want to understand how good it is in splitting that problem into small problems. Okay. So that you have the capacity to do parallel runs and process huge data and make it learn faster and deliver results faster. Otherwise, AI itself will take one day to learn and one day to deliver the result. Okay, so you want to understand how the AI system is capable of breaking the problems into sub problems. Okay, and the next one is scatter gather recursive recursion. So, where when you give a problem and it's broken into some sub problems, okay, can it run independently all these things and then put them together back into a full fledged result? Okay, how is it doing that? Okay, and at the end, can AI tell what method it used to arrive at the solution? Okay. So these six criteria are very, very important when you work or evaluate an AI system. Okay. This is nowhere mentioned in any technical books I have read so far. Pathetically, it actually came from a marketing book. Okay. But this is the, these six components are actually the most important components okay. uh, that, um, that is needed to evaluate AI systems. Okay. Uh, so one of the areas that is gaining uh, momentum, okay, uh, wide adoption in AI world, in machine learning world is called cognitive computing. Okay, so cognitive computing is very simple. It's, it's cognition means understanding. Okay? So the computer is able to understand the human beings. Okay, so that's what it is. Okay, so with this, okay, um, people are trying to build solutions. Okay where they give a new level of collaboration between man and the machine. Okay, so it understands people, it helps them to, it, it understands them well and does the task well and gives them the result. Okay, um, best example is natural language processing. You know, in Android, the most fascinating thing I love about Android is that uh, talk to text, okay, speech to text. Okay? You can speak, and it will, with 99% with accuracy, it actually, no matter what the accent is, okay, it is still able to uh, type the words accurately, both in English, Tamil, and even a lot of languages. Okay? So natural language processing is something very, very uh, advanced now, okay? and Microsoft is offering it in their cloud platform, Google is offering it in theirs, okay? IBM is a master in that, AWS, Amazon Web Service has that. Okay? Um, it is now, very good, okay, one minute, I think I'm getting a chat request. Okay, okay, sure, okay, I'll, I'll answer the question then, yeah. Mm. And then uh, there is a company called Alchemy, okay, uh, which is actually capable of running some text analytics, okay, uh, and analyze the Twitter feeds of target customers and social media channels and tell them whether it is a good company for you to do the business with, okay. And similarly, okay, there are a few algorithms that you can run uh, based on the uh, product reviews from Amazon, let's say. You pick like 1,000 customers and get all their reviews and then you run some algorithms. It gives, um, uh, it classifies these people into the five big type personalities, okay? That is called OCEAN, O-C-E-A-N, okay? Okay, openness, closeness, okay? Uh, and all those things, okay? Uh, so you can uh, you can use that to evaluate, okay? And then we also have Plitzix Wheel of Emotion, uh, where, okay? Uh, you can uh, you give a set of reviews. It will tell what the customers is feeling about your product or your company based on the words in the review. Okay, uh, so that is one important concept that you can use. Okay, so um, and then IBM Watson Tone Analyzer. Okay, IBM Watson is the AI system. Okay, and they have a specialized service called Tone Analyzer. So if you give an email com uh, content, okay, uh, it is able to. Uh, score, put a score how empathetic it is, okay, how do you, how far you actually uh, return the email that you have taken other person's thoughts into consideration and also it, it ranks how far your expertise is reflected in that email, okay. This is actually very important in sales, so IBM Watson Tone Analyzer is, is one of the premium services used by a lot of uh, organizations that heavily rely on sales email, okay. And then, uh, Mm. How AI is used in sales, okay, so uh, since the company I have worked mostly with are focused on sales and using sales, okay, 
Uh, so AI is used in sales organization, okay? Um, the number one is prescriptive analytics, okay? Uh, once it goes through the data and then it tells people what is the next best action to do, not just the decision to make. Okay, if it gives the next best decision, it is called as predictive analytics. If it gives the next best action to take, it is called prescriptive analytics, okay? So people are now making, uh, taking actions based on the system, leaving the decision to the machine, okay? So that is very, very important. And then there are a lot of things, okay, uh, follow up especially to call to see if somebody is available for a meeting at this time, okay? Uh, all those things, you can offload those to AI so that AI will call them via automated numbers, okay? And tell them, okay, and you, you must be very much aware, right? The ICICI, okay? Uh, call to, uh, the, the customer service, okay? If you book an appointment, you will first get a call and only when you connect and press one, that's when actually the other person gets the call in their center, okay? So these things are done, now done using AI, okay? And there, there's a company in India also, they're doing very good with that, in that field, okay? And then qualify leads, okay? If somebody submits a contact information in a website saying, hey, I love your product services, okay? And this is what I'm looking for, okay? So you can qualify it to see whether this person is a spam or is it a real person, okay? Uh, can we do it? All those things, okay? And then speaker separation, okay? When when customers, when people call customer service, they are very angry, right? And the customer service representative also speaks, and this person also speaks, and they have a clash over, um, and they, they get into argument and other things. So in the end, what companies want to do is they want to listen to, to the voices individually. Okay? I take the customer service representative and analyze his tone. Okay? Did he get angry? If so then I have to train him on anger management. If the customer is angry, uh, did he get calmed down at the end of the call? Was he happy? Okay. So you can do this via speaker separation. Okay. And Andrew's uh, first course itself, uh, lab exercise is based on this. Okay. And sentiment analysis. Okay. So based on the mails from clients and other things, you can uh, do some sentiment analysis. Okay. Mm -hmm. How people feel about you. Okay. And you can generate a keyword cloud from a lot of emails or uh, review comments saying, hey, uh, happy is the biggest word. Okay. The, 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 Okay, and the, uh, the word with the red is, uh, you know, uh, faulty piece, okay, all those things. So, uh, sales uses AI, okay, very innovatively uh, than other uh, divisions of the business, okay. Um, that's all. And then uh, there is also a company called Boomerang, okay, and they have a plugin called Respondable, okay, uh, that you can use for Gmail and Outlook that will actually prioritize your emails to read, not based on the date in which you received it, instead based on the content in the email. Okay, something might be very urgent and they might have emailed you 24 hours ago and something is not urgent and you have it at the top of your inbox. That doesn't make sense, okay? Uh, and uh, you have seen recently in Gmail, they have introduced snooze buttons, okay? So if you ask somebody something, it knows it that they are supposed to respond and it will snooze you saying, hey, this guy did not respond, do you want to follow? Okay, that is there even in Gmail right now, okay? Uh, and also, you know, it, it helps you draft emails that helps you in, uh, increase the conversion, which means make the prospects into buyers, okay? And also keep track of some following metrics, okay? Which is like uh, um, the number of words you use, uh, how strong the language is, okay? How calm the language is, all these things, okay? And there's another tool called Phrasy, which will optimize your language, saying, hey, don't use this word or that word. So Grammarly also does that very well, okay? And so Phrasy is another one. Uh, problem with leads, okay, when somebody, when sales people get a lot of leads, that's where their uh, opportunity starts, okay, and they have a lot of problems, okay, too many leads to follow, up, too many leads fall through the cracks, sometimes people miss it, and people actually don't follow up with the potential customers on a timely basis, okay, sales people are unable to qualify the leads, okay, sometimes they call a spam number, okay, <laughs> and find out, oh, God, it's a spam number, okay, yeah, and, uh, um, even with the customer relationship management system, which contains all the leads, it is not enough for salespeople to manage it effectively. Okay? And sometimes salespeople are pulled to spend, okay, non-sales activity, like prepare a sales report, okay, all those things. Okay? Uh, and also sometimes timing is a problem. Okay? By the time the salespeople contacts a company, uh, the company was already ready to make a decision with the other vendor. Okay? All these things. Okay? And it also emotionally affects salespeople. So to solve all this, okay, one company called Conversica, they came up with the AI-based virtual sales, sales assistant, okay? 
it is very good company very good product and service they have okay if you give all your leads to that service it will sift through it qualify the leads and remove the unqualified leads if anything looks like a spam or anything it will take it away so that you focus on it and then it will actually call the target customer okay couple of times to find out what is the best time to call them what is the best number either cell or landline okay and what is their intent to buy okay so it can do that okay and then connect the sales people into that okay and post sales it can follow up with the customers uh, saying hey how good was the sales or what's your questions or concerns okay all these conversica can do it's very good okay and the other company is a mind blowing company okay ip south they call themselves as the digital labor company okay uh, i wouldn't call it just virtual sales assistant it can do lot of things okay so the number one is conversational intelligence okay you can ask questions via voice and get your answers via uh, text or whatever medium you want okay so it is very very good with conversational intelligence and it can carry on the conversation through series of questions and you can even switch the context all those things okay Uh, so they call themselves a digital labor company and that is um, something that i'm keen to learn okay and it has very advanced analytics uh, so that you understand how the sales assistant is doing and it can also control the overall experience that the client experiences when they call the support calls okay or customer care calls okay it can take the customer care calls and manage the experience for the customer okay uh, and it can learn okay you can give the input and make it learn okay we don't need to code and it has a very smart workflow where it does not know something it can always escalate it to the human being to answer it, the right person okay so this is a very good so you can read more about this company ip soft okay uh, the concept of digital labor uh, is something that is uh, at the very beginning but i think it will be a good break okay. so we are done with ai okay mm, so let me look at the time now just to make sure okay so we have 15 minutes okay but so i should be good okay so uh so we will move on to economies of scale okay mm. so economies of scale okay if you study economics okay uh, this is very important most of the businesses today okay uh, that are based on the industrial revolution uh, are running with this principle called economies of scale okay what it does is okay if you make one product the cost to make that one product is very high but if you make 100 okay the cost to make each product actually goes down okay if you make 1000 it goes down further okay so the you reduce the per unit cost okay and then you make it okay that's how we are able to buy things cheap okay china is thriving on economies of scale okay because they manufacture everything in millions and uh, millions okay that is why all the products from china are cheap okay and there are other reasons why economy of scale worked so far okay uh, because people also think bigger was almost better especially in developed countries okay if you have a very big store you will have a lot of products so when i walk in i can get almost all i want okay and if you make 100000 products okay uh, the number of defects will go down okay out of 100000 1 lakh okay maybe two or three will be a mistake but if you are making it in small you will have the same amount then it's, it's, it's something okay so bigger was almost better okay and uh, that was actually uh, very good okay? and then very high entry barrier for startups okay since they are all big companies you cannot really come in and compete with them as a startup okay and since you do you eliminate competition that's also one more where economies of scale work okay and then cheap labor okay so labor in us is costly to make the same car or even a small cell phone it's very high there But whereas in China is cheap, India is cheap, so cheap labor also was one of the reasons why economies of scale worked. Okay, but that is still going to be there, but that is getting changed in the way companies are using it. Okay, so today, okay, the new mode of scaling. So if you are starting a company today, okay, that wants to manufacture masks or sell masks, okay, okay, and let's assume there is no crisis as of now. Okay, there is free flow of goods and people between the countries of the world. in that scenario the new mode of scaling is the one that you should opt for the first thing is if you want the employees okay or workers don't hire huge scale of workers instead find the people in up for freelancer or subcontractor okay rent the scale that you need for the workforce from these platforms if you want to 
computing power okay don't buy your servers and we put them in your own data center and run it go with amazon google or microsoft you rent the computing if you don't need it just give it away the cpus you don't really physically buy any assets okay and if you want to market access to customers use social media facebook twitter wechat okay these are all going to touch uh, you know close to billion people right um, uh, and then if you want to rent production you want to even make the product don't make it by yourself okay uh, you can contract the manufacturers okay uh, and then you can actually uh, uh, use alibaba or something okay contract the manufacturers and then try to uh, uh, try to make the product and then sell it okay and use ai to automate as many tasks as possible okay if you are a startup that is doing business okay uh, really you have to think of scaling like this okay having 100 employees okay uh, is for a startup is not really a smart thing okay instead you should uh, focus on these type of scaling okay and and work on it okay what is the advantage of this new mode of scaling okay so the number one is okay mm, agility okay so you have to be very agile so that you can change the course okay so to to give this this is a powerful quote okay technology is now devaluing mass production and mass marketing okay um, like you go into the big stores you know you have the same cloth 10 pieces and uh, four people buy it and when they go to the road okay they see that okay okay and there is mass marketing everybody is using the same brand of cooking oil soap all those things okay but now people are now looking for something personalized and other things okay so uh, so you you can have to build a niche uh, you cannot compete with economy of scale companies but if you want to um, have your own space in the market then you should focus on micro production and finely targeted marketing okay and that happens with a lot of small companies okay uh, for example uh, there is a company called uh, uh, i think uh, ultra a l t r a okay they make running shoes okay but if you look at their shoes they actually are not shaped in the regular shoes where you have the pointed end at the center pointed uh, portion at the center of your leg instead they make the shoe which actually looks like your leg okay uh, so there are and not many know that but they are actually becoming very big and popular and they do find target and marketing okay agility okay in, in this new age okay uh, if you want to be agile you have to rent the capabilities go to the market quickly and change the course if one product is not selling stop the production and move on to other product okay just because you know uh, you you are example is example is tirupur okay they were making t-shirts okay and they were never imagined making uh, masks or suits okay thank god they they had that uh, uh, that infrastructure can be used to make the same masks and suits at this time right so they changed the course quickly okay that's what agility is okay uh new scaling advantage okay so once you take advantage of this new type of scaling okay uh, you can instantly create make market and deliver products anywhere in the world okay right now you make a product you sell it in amazon india for a month and if amazon likes it you can talk to them okay and say you wanted to sell it to southeast asia like singapore okay and then to europe you can expand it okay so this is what is uh, is the power of new model of economy okay okay and again uh in this era okay that's what my first point at the very beginning was okay uh, the technology is conforming to humans rather than we learning the technology the technology is learning about us okay and the disruption is major in almost in almost all major sectors we are waiting for a right disruption okay so i'm going to talk few disruptions that we are seeing that that is waiting to happen okay in few industries okay so the first is healthcare okay so today's healthcare okay mostly treats sick people okay but if you look 200 years back in china or india okay the healthcare was actually focused on giving people a healthy life okay preventive okay in china you will be surprised during the uh, period when kings were ruling the country okay uh, they would pay to the doctor okay uh, every month okay a community so that his job is to make sure nobody falls sick not to treat sick people okay if they fall sick he won't get the pay that's how it was in china 200 years back okay and healthcare in most of the times if you look at 
their products and other things they are more regulator focused okay, the government or the regulatory agency okay if they have a lot of rules and they are burdened by that in, because of which they are not customer focused okay uh, because regulators they don't want uh, do, this dose to go this month they cannot sell the injection to people they cannot give this medicine without prescription okay uh, or some medicines may be can be treated for some other disease but uh, the regulators say don't use it okay? like chloroquine right what we are seeing uh, trump is asking Mr. modi okay uh, and then also you know personalized diet and personalized medicine okay uh, most of the people who take medicine lifelong medicines you know they take a very generic dose of a three times a day all those things but in reality they may not even need three times if they have enough physical activity or other things they may need only two times okay they have to personalize the medicine and the diet okay that is not happening um, and then prescriptive medicine to preventive supplements okay right now you go to a doctor he prescribes a medicine instead the doctor has to give you preventive supplements by taking using your genomics you can find you can find out what are the diseases your ancestors had and based on that he say hey if you don't want to have these problems so start taking these supplements or change your lifestyle okay and you can track the health of people uh, via food ordering apps and wearables okay uh, and the use of robotics in surgery is becoming popular okay one of the cases uh, there is a robot called Sarasis developed by Johnson and Johnson uh, one minute my connection is not stable uh, one uh, can you hear me Yeah, yes, Okay, fine. thank you. Um, yeah, so Seracis is a robot developed by Johnson & Johnson uh, that can actually deliver anesthesia to patients. Okay? This is a very sensitive matter. You know, if the dosage goes high, they may not even wake up from the uh, unconscious. Okay? Uh, and uh, for knee surgeries and other things, robots are doing some surgeries. Okay? And the expectation is, okay, what the disruption is, okay, there will be a lot of small pharma companies that will spring that will make specialized medicines. Okay, and then the health insurance industry will also be disrupted if people focus more on prevention than on prescription. Okay, so if they focus more on prevention, change their lifestyle by doing exercise, all those things, okay, uh, the insurance will lower the premium or they may even give them rewards. For example, if you don't, uh, in, in US, we have it for car insurance. If you don't make an accident for two years and if you are with the same insurance company, in the third year, they will give you a discount. Okay, similarly, if you don't undergo any surgery or uh, any sickness, serious sickness, okay, and you are maintaining your health, the insurance company may uh, waive your premium. Okay, this is right now in in US. There is a way uh, in which most of the insurance companies, mm, if you opt for a nicotine testing to make sure you don't smoke, if you opt for that and if you don't prove that you don't smoke, okay, they will right away cut fifty dollars per month in your insurance premium. Okay, uh, so that's how it is. Okay, energy. Okay, that's another sector. Okay. Um, energy is another sector uh, where, uh, you know, um, the way we generate energy and transmit it is now becoming democratized. People are having solar roofs on top of their solar panels on top of their roofs and making their own electricity. They are storing it and even transmitting it to local electric companies. Okay. Uh, Thiru, sorry to interrupt here. Uh, yeah. Your presentation is not on. Oh, okay. Sorry. One minute. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, one minute, you know, sorry. So, yeah, uh, one minute, let me go back. So, did you guys see the healthcare slide? Or maybe I'll wait for minutes. Okay. Okay, okay. No. okay. So, can you see my screen now? You know, and others? Yeah, to do. Okay, uh, yeah. Um, sorry, so energy, okay, that's another sector that will get disrupted big time, okay, using new set of technologies, okay. Uh, as I mentioned, democratizing energy, okay. Uh, you can put a solar panel on top of your home, generate the electricity, if you have surplus, sell it to the local company, okay. So instead of you paying electricity bill to the electricity companies, the companies will pay you, okay. And it is doing very good in Australia and Costa Rica as such as a country, they are now generating more than 80% of their electricity for the whole country from solar panels. Okay, uh, if that becomes the case, the local monopolies of electric companies like Tamil Nadu Electricity and other things, okay, um, they, they may not be the monopolies anymore. Okay, you are becoming in essential electric company. Okay, 
and there is also the current infrastructure is having a lot of problems in a lot of countries because people are now using a lot of equipments and home appliances uh, to charge okay okay um, especially in developed countries charging a car overnight is, is really uh, um, um, consumes a lot of power okay a lot of people who um, who uh, initially some areas in us were not ready for this kind of things and a lot of people in the area purchased electric cars like tesla okay and chevy volt and during the night they used to plug it into the charge and actually the grid couldn't handle that load okay and they have to go in and find out what happened and then they figure out how oh, people are using electric cars a lot in this year uh, in this area okay? uh, wind power okay it was a failure okay it was not scalable very expensive instead solar power is more profitable okay so that is why you know uh, solar power is becoming this and there are a lot of battery manufacturing companies okay that are increasing to store the solar energy and other energy okay and lastly you know uh, the nuclear power plants we have right now is based on nuclear fission okay uh, like kodam kolam and others okay but companies are trying to see okay whether they can use nuclear fusion okay so the reason is okay uh, sun uses nuclear fusion actually to generate its energy okay so that's why they wanted to check that okay one minute let me check it question okay oh okay uh, it was breaking the voice okay uh, can you hear me clearly hello oh so okay card okay one minute. internet problem yeah uh internet problem here one minute uh, can you hear me now yes okay so uh, so yeah i will repeat the last point mm. the nuclear power plants that we have today are based on nuclear fission okay uh, but they are trying to see whether they can use fusion uh, because sun is generating its energy using nuclear fusion okay and there are advantages to that approach but it's very expensive and very risky okay? but but there are also just going on in that area so okay so energy is very very uh, right for disruption again if you imagine the scenario where most people have electric cars okay what would gas stations be doing at that point okay there is no role for them okay they may be used for some limited um uh, areas in the economy uh, okay uh, but uh, they might even turn themselves into a charging station or something okay turbo charging station or something okay so uh, energy field if you look at it it's ripe for disruption of new set of technologies combined with ai and others uh, will make it uh, uh, a big deal okay uh then uh, education side okay mm, education is also changing a little bit okay uh but uh, again uh, it is still in the industrial revolution mode i would say okay uh, but here are a few examples of okay? a class dojo okay uh, it's one startup from us where they have a mini social network for teachers students and parents and uh, uh, they are trying something different um, with respect to education and making parents involved in the education okay uh, and also instead of uh, uh, pushing standardized curriculum to all the students uh, they wanted to push uh, personalized specialization okay and lastly okay uh, grouping students not by age but by interest learning speed and level of independence okay and social capability so that is also one area where um, ia is used especially in coursera and other open course platforms okay uh, they are trying to understand okay how to group people based on interest learning speed level of independence and social capability and then you all know con academy uh, a very popular site in us okay which is used by 40 million students and 2 million teachers every month okay mm. and it has lot of school stuff uh, that any um, primary and high schooler can go in and learn interesting concepts okay uh, finance uh, it's awesome okay if you ever want to be on the cutting edge of technology i recommend you join finance industry okay no industry in the world okay is is as leading in terms of technology as finance okay so finance is completely digital right now okay now uh, your money is just a information okay the transactions you make is just a entry in the database okay everything is actually uh, digital in finance okay um it's, it's very rare okay only when you go to bank and withdraw some hard cash that's when you really feel okay there is something out of technology but most of the times whatever you do with finance will be with technology okay? 
and the existing banks are becoming like platforms okay where um, you can um, where you can get the credit card from multiple companies so banks through a to a website that is not directly related to that, okay? and mortgage industry is also going to change okay and then there was this new act in us in 2013 called jobs act uh, whereby until uh, 2013 um, you know only angel investors and others can go and uh, invest in companies startup companies okay uh, and get the shares of the companies at the beginning of the company itself. Uh, with Jobs Act, they said up to one million dollars. Okay, uh, you can raise a crowdfunding. Okay, and give them the shares independently. Okay, uh, so that way, you know, if it's a cool startup, uh, if the shares are only ten dollar price, you can buy ten shares, and probably in 10, 15 years, those ten shares become fifty thousand dollars. Okay, so it helps you to make. So it's a very big breakthrough. Uh, and you all know about cryptocurrencies, so I will definitely conduct a blockchain seminar uh, when I'm in Coimbatore for you guys. That's my specialty. Okay, so cryptocurrencies is also um, entering the mainstream finance. Okay, and it's uh, rattling all the central banks. Okay, and AI-based financial advice. Okay, uh, there are two companies called Wealthfront and Betterment. So if you can read about them, they give okay tips about what are investment you can make, how your investment is doing, all those things. And Lendo, okay, and Lendo, okay, it's a credit scoring company, but not based on your income and transactions, not just, okay, it also uses the data from social network also, okay, to make sure you are socially a good person, okay, and China has this uh, separately, okay, called the social score itself for citizens, okay, and it's tracking them, okay, uh, and then lastly, for tax calculations and filing, okay, uh, people are using artificial intelligence these days. Okay, even companies like TurboTax, they are using AI okay, now for our most critical processes. Media, okay, uh, it is already disrupted largely. Okay, um, um, you know we, you guys are aware of Netflix, right? So Netflix was the online portal, whereas Blockbuster was the stores in US. Okay, Blockbuster and Netflix competed each other, and then Blockbuster went out of business. And Netflix is doing much better than movie theaters, most of the theaters right now. Okay, and you know, um, if you want to enter the media industry, you can start your own radio station, you can start your own video station. Okay, and you can personalize the content and advertisement. Okay, and with the virtual reality, we are expecting that the right now we wear 3D glass and go and see movies in the theater. But we are thinking if virtual reality comes into picture. The theaters itself will, will change, okay, including the seating arrangement and the movement of people, all those things, okay. And the future of television will also change with respect to augmented reality as well as virtual reality, okay. So the media is also ripe for disruption, okay, uh, with new technologies coming in, okay. Okay, so this is where the, uh, the main lesson of this presentation, competing with machines, okay. So there are three levels in which you can compete with the machine. Okay, so the number one is competing mechanically. Okay, and that's what the industrial revolution was. Okay, and we already lost it in the first revolution itself. Okay, the second way we are competing right now is compete cognitively, in which we are humans are in a good position right now. Okay, so if you can understand things, okay, and get things done through computer with the help of computer, and that's how your job is. Okay. Uh, way, you know, cognitively, okay, you can definitely, um, you are in, at least for the next 10, 15 years, you are safe, I would say. But long term, okay, you have to compete with it creatively. Okay? To be creative, okay, uh, you have to think like an artist, not like an engineer. Okay, Steve Jobs, okay, was creative because he did not think like an engineer. Okay, so you have to focus more on arts, okay, okay, and uh, find out um, how things are presented, okay, and what they convey, okay, you have to develop definitely an eye for art, okay, uh, okay, and a heart for color, okay, so that you can compete creatively with machines in the future confidently, okay? and for machines to become creative, it will take years to get that level, okay, so if you want to future-proof your career, okay, you have to start to compete creatively, okay? Think like an artist, okay? Uh, learn about liberal arts, okay? Uh, and how uh, people in that thinking, okay? There are quite a few fields, okay? Uh, 
uh, that I would say that you have to start reading about. Okay, um, in in engineering we know we solve the problem. Okay, but most of the times the drawback is in in our engineering education system and others is in. Okay, we are taught to answer the questions. Okay, but there are two fields. Okay, which are taught to question. Okay, the answer. Okay, number one is philosophy. Number two is actually law. Okay, okay. So they have a different perspective. Okay, and number three is liberal arts. Okay, so you have to start reading about philosophy, law, and liberal arts. Okay, so that you can be better equipped for future. I okay? will start with the drawbacks in AI. Okay, so what are the problems with respect to AI? Okay, perception. Okay, so if you talk, if you say Apple, okay. The computer AI system still doesn't confidently figure out whether you are talking about the company or about the food. Okay, so it 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 cannot understand the context in which you are talking. Still, that is a major weakness in AI. Okay, uh, so so that is what is uh, uh, is is still preventing it from becoming gender purpose. Okay? And the second is mobility. Okay, uh, in the sense, uh, uh, robots. Are are the physical manifestation of AI? Okay, it's like a physical form for for AI. Okay, it can do a lot of things, but still, okay, it cannot do some of the things that a mechanical person can do. For example, uh, lifting things from the table, different things. Okay, they cannot really build a robotic arm that can apply the right pressure to the right material. They couldn't do it. Okay, sometimes it took a glass. Uh, Um, bottle with uh, holding it heavy and it broke it. Okay. Sometimes it took a heavy. It couldn't lift. Okay. A heavy object because it was holding it loose. Okay. So mobility is still uh, getting refined. Okay. And the other major weakness. Okay. This is where you can beat the machines. They are strong in tactical calculation but weak in strategic planning. Okay. I will give an example. What uh, Gary Kasparov told about this. Okay. He actually told when he played the games. Okay, I am going to make the AI's king come to this particular square, and I am going to win the game at that point. And he was able to do it, but the AI couldn't do that. It won, but it never couldn't tell how it's going to, where it's going to make Gary Kasparov's king come, and it will make the win. It couldn't do that. Okay, so that means Gary Kasparov was strong in strategy, but the machine was tactical in the sense it was just running some loop calculation. To calculate only the next best move, not the long-term move. Okay, so machines have a weakness of being tactical, not strategic. Okay, so just be okay, and then uh, it can answer questions, but it cannot ask questions. Okay, uh, and then it is very weak in applying context, as I mentioned uh, at the perception. And also ambiguity, it cannot handle ambiguity at this point. Okay, uncertainty. Okay, current uh, drawbacks in AI. Okay, um, we can say machines. Okay, uh, this is from Gary Kasparov. Okay, so he says machines don't need to do the things same way the natural world does in order to be useful or surpass nature. Okay, and his example is uh, aeroplanes don't flap their wings. And helicopters don't need wings at all. Okay, so okay, so so that is a difference. Okay, you you took the inspiration from nature, but you didn't really design it like nature. Imagine if airplanes is uh, flapping the wings to fly, it would take much more energy and it have much more turbulence. Okay, and the wheel. Okay, nowhere in nature wheel is existing. Okay, and the last is uh, the current products in market. Okay. In AI, okay, AI-based products, they always advertise saying, "Hey, a human can read this 20-page document in five minutes, whereas AI can read and understand it in five seconds." Okay, they focus more on the results rather than the methods used in achieving the results. Okay, and that is actually becoming a limitation uh, in in quite a few areas uh, where they are not even able to implement AI. Okay, and then most of the machine learning systems, uh, you can get an accuracy. Close to 95 percentage, but anything beyond that, okay, uh, it's actually um, tough. Okay, uh, you have to spend a lot of money. Okay, 
so that's another and then the last common drawback is okay machines use more energy than humans for the same operation okay so with that i think i am done so if you want to read you can read these books and then you can connect me with these channels and i think uh, i can answer the questions right now one minute sorry uh, i'll open the chat and answer the questions one by one okay uh, what are the industrial trends that are reigning the world of ai okay. yeah so ai um, is now more into manufacturing okay uh, so iot with in combination with ai in the manufacturing industry is uh, becoming very big okay uh, if you want to read more okay uh, i will give a book uh, it was called uh, the fourth industrial revolution uh, by klaus schwab he is the founder of the world economic forum okay and if you read that book it will blow your mind okay and i definitely recommend you reading that book okay uh, fourth industrial revolution by klaus schwab okay founder of world economic forum okay uh, yeah but manufacturing wise yeah ai yeah, is uh, heavily used there okay uh, the machines are very intelligent these days okay uh, when they see a defective piece in the line it automatically alerts okay uh, it uses computer vision api very heavily to identify defective pieces versus normals and any deviations all those things okay um and then how will today's job get affected towards evolution of ai and how much drop will drop and rise okay so yeah it, it will affect uh, mostly you no know, unskilled laborers are uh, are being threatened right now okay just like how in us you know um, household servants were replaced with washing machines microwaves okay and the ready made foods all those things okay um, when self driving car comes taxi drivers will be out self driving trucks comes lorry drivers will be out okay so there are a lot okay and then probably news writers uh, will have their own uh, challenge okay okay um, so that is something we will have yeah uh, yeah okay yeah so yeah yes one was a tie yes you are right yeah it was a six game match yes so it was six game match one was tied yeah so um so it was but eventually the winning was three and uh, two right so one was tied so yeah so yeah that was uh, uh but that that book itself by deep thinking by gary kaspar was very right actually very very good okay he he tell, um, he tells a lot of things okay uh, which is uh, um, which, which helped him and he also says very frankly why he embraced ia even though he lost uh, the games against it yeah but but he is very good he, he points out lot of weaknesses in ia which nobody is doing in today's world okay and that is very important for us okay uh, to understand what are the weakness for ia so that you don't give undue power to ia yeah uh, yeah what made steven hawkins say ai in the task force i have seen uh, it forces people to get yeah it it really depends upon you know how people will be using ai right so if it gets into destructive hands okay for example i give you atom okay you use nuclear fusion and make power and help bring electricity or i give you atom you make atom bomb and drop it somewhere okay so he is concerned more about how ethical companies will be uh, when they build ai okay already lot of things that are being driven by ai okay um is actually very uh, uh, they are having a complaint that it is having a built in bias okay because the person who trained it gave the data that is itself is biased okay there was a recent uh, um controversy came in okay where when they gave a lot of people's photos to ai system and try to classify them into uh, different races okay and then it was really uh, um not doing a good job okay it was building a bias and based on the race they were it was trying to correlate how good they are and uh, suddenly they realized that it is really becoming racist okay when they went back to why it became like that that's when they found out the person who trained it gave the data that way okay he gave, he said hey, when he gave uh, photos of few people he gave it with the violent images so that's when he realized okay so these people will be violent okay and again you know about microsoft right it released a bot in twitter uh, can you hear me uh, i just got connected again okay 
Uh, yeah, so when uh, Microsoft released a bot, okay, uh, which was learning from Twitter and other public forums, and it became very aggressive on social forums and started to spewing even bad words. Okay, and they eventually shut it down. Read about that story. Okay, so when when you expose AI to learn from the real world people, it becomes much more a threat actually. Okay, instead of gracefully handling it, it became a problem. Okay, okay, so that's what. Uh, it is okay so yeah you know it all depends upon the companies and again most of the companies have pledged to use yeah ethically okay microsoft google and others okay so we hope uh, people use it ethically okay any questions any other questions ma Hello. Hello. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon. Myself, uh, uh, Nanda Kumar. Uh, okay. I'm very happy to uh, listen to you. It is really nice uh, listening to an alumni who has reached, uh, 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 who is an already an entrepreneur, and uh, uh, I was listening. Uh, very happy and proud. Thank uh, you. That you are reached this height. Um, you have uh, started off uh, with a nice story uh, yeah. with the moral and uh, you have also touched upon i mean you have uh, insisted uh, auto alerts rather than reports prediction based on uh, prediction over uh, intuition or gut feeling yeah. machines over man from uh, touching upon the revolutions and the importance of all the revolutions industrial revolutions and uh, it, it was really nice uh, listening to you hope you. Uh, in future also we will be listening and uh, the future students also will get benefited out of you so uh, sure, definitely yeah. yeah i'll help you happy thank you thank you thank you so much thank and, you, sir. and thanks for you know thank, uh, for referring uh, me i shall be for uh, uh, changing such a nice yeah, we should thank our uh, Sir, sir, he voluntarily accepted this as I posted the request in the... Uh, Kalai ma'am, uh, your audio is not clear, I believe. I don't know, some connect problem with my connection or... I, I'm not sure. Oh. Ma'am, please be louder. Oh, is it uh, okay, audible, Okay, sir? fine. Yes, now yeah. audible, yeah. Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, actually, Renault and Thiru voluntarily accepted uh, when I posted the request in LinkedIn. So we, we should thank them, sir. Actually, okay, okay. Are, uh, thank you. It was nice uh, uh, listening to you. Such a good presentation. So okay. thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. God bless you. Uh, uh, students, any other doubt or any feedback from your side? Yes. And thank you, Thiru. Actually, you explained uh, some uh, data-driven culture to how they are used in media, finance, um, and out of the field, and, uh, and robots of AI also. So this will help our students to get into the uh, projects like uh, context-based searching and how this can be used in the uh, yeah. mechanical field also. Yeah. And it's really uh, very informative, Thiru. Uh, I, I thank uh, special thanks to our Vinod, yes. uh, senior manager mm -hmm. in uh, CTS, for participating in this, and uh, faculty members uh, Rajni Ma'am and Suga Madam and Kumar Sir for participating and uh, listening this uh, session, and all other students. Hope um, as the May Lady, everything is given in the. Uh, Site, uh, you can, uh, uh, you can connect with me on these channels. Yeah, I will definitely yeah. send the whole class with this. I can, so you yeah. can contact uh, Mr. Thiru for any other clarifications also in future. Uh, thank you, students. Uh, thank you, Thiru, thank for you, uh, spending uh, two hours with us okay. and very uh, pro providing the very much uh, useful information to us. Yes, thank you, Thiru. Thank you, Vinod. Thank you, North. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you.